Hello everyone, Patrick here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the JSON exporter in Blender and how we can incorporate that into our workflow. Uh, now to start, this is going to be actually a multi-part uh, look into the actual exporter. The exporter actually has a lot of depth to it. We're going to be looking at the most fundamental level, which is going to be exporting an object and sticking it in there. Looking at how the JSON file is marked up and how we can use that loader to uh, load up the file. We're also going to look at some common pitfalls and mistakes that you might might come with loading up a file uh, from Blender into 3.js. Alright, so without further ado, I'm going to open up the Blender file that I've been working with and if you want to see how this was built, I have a quick video uh, that I will link to uh, at the bottom that shows actually how this model was built. Uh, in any event, I want you to be aware that what we have right here are three face materials. We have this Lambert, this uh, this Fong, and then another Lambert. Okay. Now you can see what the Fong shader is doing is it's giving us those reflections throughout the whole bird, uh, which would be just on the black one. And we can change these reflections by just increasing the intensity over here as well as the size so you can see with a higher intensity uh, what that's going to do is actually change the shading on this slightly all right so after we've installed the 3.js and i'll provide the link on how you can install this uh, export function into here uh, after you have it installed what you're going to need to do is come down here over to our exporter 3.json and you're going to need to select certain ones of these options depending on what you're trying to do. Now in this case we're only doing one simple object which means that we want to make sure that scene and embed geometry and all this stuff is turned off. Let me just show you real quickly. If I had this turned on and I export it, I'm going to save that over. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to load up that file. notice nothing is appearing right now okay now let me show you what the error message you're getting it's actually trying to uh, traverse the scene and it can't find the length of everything that's in there so what we need to actually do is just make sure that when we're dealing with one simple object that we always export and disable all of that scene information so let's go ahead and do this export I'm going to go back into our models already all right, so let's make sure we disable scene. Let's make sure all the stuff is disabled. The only one we're going to keep is this face material, mapping materials. That's going to actually put all of the uh, colors onto the faces that we were using. We were mapping that. Let's go ahead and export that file. Okay, now let's take a look at that file as it stands. Okay. All right, so here is the actual JSON file that we just exported. You'll see that it's type geometry. The generator was the IO3. And it says that we have 606 faces and 608 vertices. If we scroll down, you'll see that we have three different materials. And those are the three different materials that we defined in our blender. So I'll go ahead and expand this a little just so you can see. So you have one, two, three, one, two, three, right here. And you'll see they've also been assigned these values, shading, lamber, fong, lamber. Okay, so what do those pertain to? That actually pertains to the specular intensity right there. So if I nudge this up, a hair up on it, like so, and then I go ahead and export that file again. Go back to our models folder, birdie, export. Okay, now take a look and see what happened That when that adjusted. You'll see that that's now a Fong shader. All right, so that's how you adjust that. If we want to keep back down, we can go back down. Or you could just manually type in here. I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that. All right, so those are all of our materials. And then here is all the data that pertains to the vertices. Okay. So now we have all that mapped. And there's our faces. Okay. All right. So moving on, let's go ahead and see how that looks. 
All right, there's our actual scene object. And you can see the specular highlights are coming out in here. Now, if I were to change these to Fong, save all, refresh, and now you can see the whole shader changes along with it. So that's just pulling in that JSON data and giving us a look at, at, the, at the scene. Now in this scene, I have a couple other things. I have, I believe, a hemisphere light in here and some other uh, lights as well, uh, as well as change the background. But overall, I'm using kind of the same basic scene. So how do we bring in this JSON data is the next question. Uh, very simple. All right, the first thing we need to do is we need to add the loader. And I've gone ahead and uh, already called the the loader, so uh, or defined it as a variable. So we have our loader, which is new three dot JSON loader, and we're going to load up that model, and then we're going to do this little callback function right here. That callback function refers to this right here. Now, typically people embed this, but I like to keep it separate. Um, <clears throat> you'll see that what we're doing is we're creating a mesh face material, and we're assigning that the materials that we defined in that uh, JSON file. So we have materials and geometry. So if we take a look at the JSON file real quick, you'll see here's our materials and then our geometry. Okay, so it's basically gonna call that as reference point and read through all this information to define that scene. So we're defining our materials and we're doing mesh face material because we have multiple different uh, faces that all have different ma uh, uh, materials assigned to them. They're mostly all diffuse materials, but at the same time, it's nice to see that information. Okay, so we have our mesh. This is where we basically skin the thing. And then we add that, uh, add everything together. So we skin it, give it its geometry, give it its material, define it, and then add it to the scene. Very simple. And then it's just a matter of putting it into position after that. Okay. So that essentially is how you would bring in a JSON file uh, into it. Uh, in the future, we're going to get a little bit more complicated because there's a lot of stuff uh, with these JSON files and it can get, get very, very complicated uh, very quickly. So I just want to go over the most basic, basic way of bringing in a file and using that mesh face material to assign it a variety of different colors. All right, so thank you again for tuning in. And when we go look at this next time, we're going to start animating, doing some other stuff with the JSON file and continuing to improve our Blender to 3.js workflow. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe.